I enjoyed my time standing in the river up to my waist, but now it's time to get down to business. I'm a little more familiar with these surroundings. We're gonna cook up a scoff, as we call it around these parts, for dinner tonight. We're gonna use some local ingredients, including bake apples, partridge berries, scrunch, and this is another fancy word for pork fat. We've got some hardtack, we've got some rabbit, and believe it or not, the world famous cod tongues. By the time we get done with all this, you're gonna think of Labrador in a whole new light. We kicked off with Goody's Rabbit Stew. Put the rabbit in pieces now, and we'll put some julienne, some turnip and carrot and celery and onion with it. Braise it in the oven, and then we'll take it out and take the bones out, and all those flavors meld together and reduce it in a little sauce, and voila, rabbit goody style. I see. That's all the bones now, dear. And that's it. Now that the bones are out, we'll put all the vegetables and the meat back together in one pot, and we're gonna keep on braising this until that meat is good and tender. And after it's done, we got a couple of surprise ingredients to finish up this stew. So what's simmering away over here now? Here we have our uh, pea soup. That's, uh, we're using this for our app tonight. Mm, yellow pea. Yellow split pea. Oh boy, that's good. Uh, there's salt meat in that, what mm -hmm. we refer to as salt meat here in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's actually salted corned beef. Uh-huh. It's pickled. You can and meanwhile, meat. Pat was cooking up fish and brews. First ingredient? Good stuff. Now, I know what that is. That looks like hardtack. That's hardtack, which has been soaked for approximately three hours. Now, and for those who don't know what hardtack is, this is quite literally bread that's been dried, but extremely hard. You can drive nails with this bread, can't you? You're right. Absolutely. It's very hard, very hard. It's difficult to break it with your hands, but it's why we have to let it soak. Uh -huh. And to this, we'll add our salt cod fish and our lightly caramelized uh, onions with some pork scrunchions, and that's our fish and brews. This is such a distinctive group of ingredients. I, I honestly, I've never seen anything like this. Now, as they say, personally, I like this with a little molasses over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like to just spread butter on it, a drawn butter. Others just sprinkle a little brown sugar, and others just eat it the way it is. That's done. Oh, those are all set. Okay, so we got everything for fish cakes, Shannon? We certainly do. So how's it go now? Uh, we boil off our potatoes, mash them, let them cool slightly. Beforehand, we have our salt cod boiled off. Beautiful. Add that to our potato. There's all the onions. onions. Now, we what's have, this here? This is Newfoundland summer savory. Summer savory? It's got almost like a sage parsley scent Indeed, to it. Yeah. This guy's not afraid of flavor. And one egg. One egg, a little binder. And some brown pepper. We'll mix all this together. You must have had these when you were a kid. Did you eat these a lot at home? Oh, or? I love these. Actually, they're served uh, quite often for breakfast in Newfoundland. Really? Yeah, they are. Okay, that should do it. I'm gonna lightly flour our table here. And you want them pretty thick, probably about three quarters of an inch thick. Cut them out. This Labrador feast is shaping up. And now, the stars of the show. Here we go, some dinner at last. Yeah, the plank and the salmon. Now look at that, baby. How are you gonna get fillets out of there? Well, you're only going to take a piece off the back and two pieces off the tail. That's all you get off the old fish up there. It's actually quite simple, isn't it? Yeah. Now, what about all this in here? It's all, it? There's a bit of fish here, but there's all bone. There's nothing you can do with it. So you really don't get much yield out no, of it. No, not there. much at all. All right. Well, listen, I know how to do up a salmon, so I'll okay. get to work on that. Of course, there's a lot more meat on this baby here. That's right. Now, what goes with pike? Mustard. From fishing lessons to cooking oh, lessons, uh, it was my turn to show off. I think it's about time you just showed off some of your stuff. <laughs> well, honestly, I've never cooked pike before. Well, what would you do with that? I'm thinking real simple Asian-inspired marinade, so we'll start with just a little bit of soy sauce. We'll get some Asian-inspired? Yeah, <laughs> storeroom-inspired. That's what I had, that's what I used. A little bit of olive oil. Now you see how it starts binding together for you there? Yeah. That's, that's that mustard kicking in. It helps bind all those oil and water molecules together. Yeah, that looks great. So let's uh, let's just pour that right over the pike. And then we'll mix that up a little bit. Now since we're on this uh, regional cuisine kick here, I thought we'd uh, bring some of my favorite in, maple syrup. I love it. Yeah, we're going to put that on the salmon. So <laughs> we are going to use some more mustard on this one. Okay. Give her the gusto there. Okay. Now, we'll put a little bit of hot sauce in there. Of course, a little bit of salt. And we'll just whisk this together. Okay, now that looks good. Just pour it right over here. 
So after this marinades for a few hours, we'll take it and we'll pop it into a very, very hot oven. We'll roast it, and all the sugar and the maple syrup is going to give it a nice, crusty outside. It's going to be a really nice dish. And now a stroll to find my secret ingredient for the rabbit stew. Early in the season, when the new growth first appears on a spruce tree, you can actually pick the needles and use them to flavor your cooking. When it's light green, the flavor is very aromatic, very woodsy, very much like rosemary. So get the light green new growth, and you've got Labrador rosemary. This is your secret ingredient. This is what we're going to put into that rabbit stew. But this is unique. There's thousands of Labrador spruce around. I never would have thought to use the needles. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's just like Christmas. Yeah, and yeah. it's not that different from rosemary. So let's finish her up. We've got our spruce needles, fresh partridge berries. I know, aren't they great? You've never had those before, have you? That's what I got up here. This is the kind of berry that I particularly like. It's not too sweet. It's got a nice, pleasing bitterness to it, but it's balanced by the sweetness. There's a little bit of acidity in there and a distinctive perfume. And a little okay. bit of the partridge berry song. All right, we'll just stew that in, stir it up, and we'll let this sit for another few minutes. We're almost ready to serve dinner, aren't we? That's looking good, too. Wow. Now, the salmon's been in the fridge for a couple of hours marinating. You could leave it in overnight, too, and that would help. All it takes is a few hours to get all that flavor into it. At this point, you want to get some serious heat into it. You really want to take advantage of all the sugar in the maple, get some caramelization going on. So I've got the broiler set in the oven, but this isn't going to take but 10, 15 minutes max. Salmon in the oven, fresh Eagle River pike on the grill. A lot of the more delicate fishes, you just couldn't possibly grill them. They do nothing but stick. There we go. Now we'll just give it a minute or two to let the heat build up and fully cook the fish. And here's a local delicacy. In the kitchen, Shannon was frying flour-dusted cod tongues in pork fat. Are they really cod tongues? Yeah, they're really cod tongues, exactly. People also eat cod cheeks. Cod cheeks are uh, a lot meatier. Tongues have a uh, form of a jelly inside them. They're very delicious. Maple mustard roast salmon. Now that is salmon. Michael, can you plate the cod tongues for me? I sure can. Right on there. We'll be back for an authentic Labrador feast. 